welcome again guys uh, we are talking about the different type of gene expressions we have seen the gene expression process in prokaryotes now it's time to see the gene expression process in the, the eukaryotes actually the gene regulation process more often so the regulation of gene expression in prokaryotes is kind of very easy very simple because it's controlled by operon system uh, and the structure of the genes for prokaryotes is also different than the structure of the genes in eukaryotes because eukaryotic is much more complicated system now if you look at the eukaryotic genes if you look at one example of the structure what you'll find is that in eukaryotic genes we have uh, first of all that in dna we have different sections and let's say let's say let, let me draw first these are the small sections that we found definitely a section called promoter that is also found uh, uh, that is also seen in the prokaryotes also that is the controlling segment but also there are different sections present there let's say this let's say something like this, this and so on let's say this is a kind of structure of the of the eukaryotic gene and in this case, once they produce the mRNA, that mRNA actually contains all these different sections that we have seen in DNA. Now, this mRNA actually, if you look at the mRNA, there are sections which are called as exons and there are sections called as introns. These are the structural difference between the genes that are in prokaryote and eukaryote. Now, in eukaryotes, we have exons and introns. Exons are the section of uh, the gene that codes for protein. But introns are the sections that they won't code for any proteins. They just sit there as it is like that. They are called the junk or junk elements of the DNA in eukaryotes. Now, the exons are the only coding site. So, the idea here is to join all the exons and cleaving all the introns out first and that's called the splicing so here what we see after that let's say we have all those exons ready and that is we call it as a mrna or mature mrna here this is the mature mrna for example we have it so we begin with this now what why i draw all these different sections actually let me tell you in prokaryotes what we see in prokaryotes we know that we have a promoter and under that promoter element, why say under? Because it's like working under actually. Because there are, let's say, gene A, gene B, gene C. Let's say this is the operator. So, all these genes, gene A, B, and C in this case, they are under the control of this promoter. So, one promoter can control the expression of multiple genes in cascade. That is in case of prokaryotes. But in case of eukaryotes, a single gene has a single dedicated promoter all these genes so in this case if we have a gene a definitely we have a promoter for that for the gene b we have another promoter for that for gene c another promoter for that so that is a structural difference the first structural difference the second thing also i have told you about uh, this this exon things and also if you look at here if this is a promoter under that let's say this is one particular gene this is the gene let's say gene A under the expression of the promoter, this promoter, promoter let's say T. Now in this case, for the activation of this gene A, I mean for the expression of the gene A, they require multiple different types of protein complexes. In prokaryotes, they only require certain type of regulatory elements, very few, I mean one or two molecules. But in eukaryotes, multiple proteins and they work together as a protein complex to activate the transcription of one particular gene. Now, in this case, what's the procedure? Is that they require a very, very important thing that is called the transcription factors. Transcription factors or TF. There are many different types of transcription factors. They are actually protein factors. Now, those transcription factors, they can be of two different types. They can be of a positive effect or enhancer they can be of sorry not enhance actually activator they can be activator or they can be inhibitors they can function as both depending upon the situation some of them are activators some of them are inhibitors now there are sections further downstream of the desired gene 
for the downstream as you can see here in the red color I've drawn here. So this is the structure. These are this is called either enhancer or inhibitor sequence. Now these enhancers are particular sections present further downstream not actually draw downstream sorry for that actually they present further upstream most of the cases I've drawn wrong here actually it should be somewhere here let's say let hit it here further upstream actually most of the time I generally don't see it as a downstream let's say this is the enhancer enhancer out there further upstream here so this enhancer these are called the distal element distal elements in the DNA. Now this enhancer region that is present here, the distal element, this enhancer region is very much specific to interact with activator proteins. Activator proteins are nothing but transcription factors as I have told you. So the idea here they bring all those activator proteins there and they will actually fold this DNA as a loop. So if I draw it here like this, it will look something like this. Let's say this is the promoter and this is the enhancer element and in between we have all those type of proteins interacting there, right? All the different varieties of proteins interacting. All of them are transcription factors, right? As they are interacting there, this protein complex, this transcription factor enhancer complex, they are also called as activators. So activator type of transcription factors along with the enhancer, they have an interaction between them. They fold this DNA back as a loop and this loop actually attracts the RNA polymerase, the eukaryotic RNA polymerase to start transcribing the gene that is under the control of this promoter. And they start transcription, then the translation, they will produce the protein. Similarly, they also have some inhibitory elements upstream or downstream. It can present in both the directions actually. So in that case, they also have certain transcription factors as inhibitors. So if they present and they form the inhibitory complex, in that case, the synthesis of the mRNA for that particular gene is not possible. That's how they regulate this process. This is one way of regulation in the genetic level, remember. But the complicated stuff rises again and again in eukaryotes because remember this eukaryotic DNA is, is actually wrapped around histone, histone proteins, right? So let's say if this is the DNA which is wrapped around histone here, so how could, let's say we want a gene that is present here in this section for example, this is the region of the gene that is present we want to transcribe this, this, this gene. But this gene is already wrapped around a protein called histone. So how could this gene will be transcribed? So the answer here, again, we need to release this DNA from the histone. So actually, for making the DNA structures compact and putting it inside the cell, it's a, it's a tough task for doing it. They have, in eukaryotic cell, we have much more complicated arrangement called the nucleosome. This is the nucleosome structure. This is the arrangement we require. So for this arrangement to happen, we need to sometimes, if we want to express a particular gene, we want to, uh, I mean, yeah, we want to express a particular gene that is wrapped around the histone, we need to open that histone from the DNA. And for that reason, we have different levels of gene regulation and control machinery using different enzymes and also different chemical modifications of the histone. One of such modification is histone acetyl acetylation acetylation deacetylation this is one of the way and also we have methylation of histone to regulate this process to open this segment we need acetylation to coil recoil it we need deacetylation and methylation actually depends on the regulation whether it will methylation can do both uh, coiling and uncoiling depending upon the situation and where exactly the methylation takes place. So in this way, we can actually access to particular gene or we can block the access of a particular gene. So this is the way of eukaryotes actually control, multiple levels of control. There are no single control like operon we have seen in prokaryotes. They are much more difficult 
In prokaryotes, only one type of control that is present, the operon regulation. But in this case, we have the regulation in nucleosome level, we have regulation in DNA replication level, transcription level in this case, we have a post-translational level, we have splicing level at the mRNA processing level. So multiple levels of regulation present in eukaryotes because in eukaryotes it's much more difficult, it's much more complicated everything. So that's kind of overview of gene regulation in eukaryotes. If you like the video, hit the subscribe button definitely we need subscribers so hit the button and also hit the like button put some good comments there if you like the video share this as much as you can so thank you all the best